All right, so I am uh, heading to a uh, client, my first one for the day. I've got four scheduled, and uh, it's a new puppy. Um, been talking to them back and forth, and we're going to start our program today. Uh, I think it's only, I'm not sure, it's a new puppy. It might be eight weeks. It might be, you know, usually between eight and 12 weeks is a new puppy, you know, like real, real new puppy training where you're kind of starting from scratch, if you will. Um, I'll do videos talking about, uh, like, breeders doing the right stuff you know, not just the right genetics and quality of dog and all that environment, but just like the right imprinting and just things that they can do in a preliminary way to get the, the puppy ready for what's going to be needed, you know, in an actual home environment. Um, but anyway, I got that. Then I've got a couple of reactive dog cases back to back. Uh, pretty strong ones. We're still early in the process, so um, they'll do good in certain circumstances, but we're still working through some, you know, especially when the owners, of course, handling. So got to keep improving their ability to lead their dogs and be able to communicate and have good timing and consistency and all that. Uh, then I'll go home. I'll take care of my dogs, do a walk, eat lunch, and then uh, go back out later this, like, kind of late afternoon, early evening for one last uh, new puppy uh, case again. And I think they also have a... Um, a new dog, an older dog, uh, that is, uh, they want to make sure, because, you know what happens is when you have a, a new puppy and you have an older dog, if that dog's not just, like, social and comfortable and well-behaved towards the puppy, but actually has existing issues, overreacting to things, com competing for resources, including you, which is, like, the main resource to a lot of dogs, um, it can lead to bad, bad habits, even in a puppy that inherently might not have had that potential because they were more easygoing, but now the other dog drove them to be more competitive and, if you will, like independent-minded from the human's direction. So uh, be careful if you have a puppy and an older dog. And if you do have an older dog and it's really got some issues, like real, real issues, uh, I would train it first before getting a puppy. You're not going to help that. Like if, you're a new, if your dog has separation anxiety, getting another puppy is not going to help it. They're just going to probably get separation anxiety from the new dog too. Um, if your dog has like strong reactions or pulling on leashes or reactivity on leashes, whatever it is, um, doing it times two, number one, now you got in your hands double. And in my experience, dogs, if they have an issue and you try to train two at the same time, they're not listening any better. So you have to just keep improving that. Um, so yeah, that's, you know, again, I tell, and this one last point, I'll get off and make it a little shorter video. Um, everything I say, everything is based on experience. It's not opinion. It's not, you know, some people, I guess they do things. Is that guy fancy chef? Anyone knows fancy chef? Oh my God. I've never laughed so hard in my life when I saw the mom's house podcast with John, John Segura, <laughs> John. Um, oh my God. If anyone knows what I'm talking about, they're probably laughing right now. Just hearing it mentioned. Fancy chef was the, I mean, the, the pinnacle of comedy for me. I've never, I've never seen something so funny, but so real in my whole life. But anyway, um, yeah, there's fancy chef dog trainers, like the dog daddy, he's the biggest fancy chef, right? You see what he does and all of his peers are saying, yo, yo, and I'm even saying, dude, I understand what you're trying to do. I'm with you. I was more like that when I was younger and full of piss and vinegar. They just didn't like put that shit on the internet and I didn't have such a big ego so I learned better and I would look up to my more experienced elders and get better and I still try to learn, right? Dogs experience, people, educating myself, human understandings, all that stuff. But um, anyway, that would be a reason why I'd be saying it. No, I'm saying it because this has stuff that I do day in, day out. Look, it's a Sunday and I'm seeing four clients, two of them new. What do you think my week looks like? I train 20 plus dogs a week doing this. So that means that I think after, you know, three decades doing this, having dog training business, dog sitting businesses when I was a kid, I worked at vet clinics when I was a teenager. Um, I have a lot of, this is my life. I know dogs, I know people, I know why the behaviors happen, I know how to deal with it in a safe, humane way that makes the most sense to the dog above all else. And that's the hardest part, is people have this mind's eye that they think and see things in a way that isn't quite reality, and I get it, but they get so upset because they get mad that I'm seeing something that is real. If it comes to dogs, so be it. And the dogs respond to such, right? Energy, they feel it. My communication is clear enough to get them to listen. The owners struggle with that sometimes, and that's what I have to work on. But, you know, dancing around that or saying that I feel this way or this is how it should be, it's like, where's the evidence? Everyone who speaks like that has no evidence. Or anyone who's doing shit show work, like Dog Daddy is an internet dog trainer and just used some algorithm, or is doing techniques that, again, if someone bribes me with $100,000 or they put a pistol to my head, I'm gonna probably do what they say. 
that doesn't mean long term I'm gonna really it's just like I'm just motivated by fear or, or motivation or reward right um, if you connect with someone you communicate someone's experience in life they show an empathy for me they listen to me they communicate to me at a time of stress they don't react to me that's who I'm gonna look for is my guide my spiritual guide if you will what do you think a pack leader is it's the ultimate spiritual guide for a dog it's not the nonsense where we got to be physically dominant and bonk them on the nose and but it's also not babying them and feeling sympathetic you're just doing the dog a disservice because you're making it about yourself and your feelings not what's real and once you see what's real it's hard to accept it but it is it's real that's how I exist in my life since I was a little kid and that's why I do this for a living because I know dogs and animals and nature is more like that. that's why I feel more connected when I'm in those spaces or at least when I'm around dogs working in that you know, in that realm, because when I'm around a dog, even in a human house, I'm in the realm of them, the dog, so, and I'm trying to teach owners, who sometimes you see smoke coming out of their ears, and their eyes glaze over, because it's too much, and my skill set really lies in, as much as a good handler I am, I'm also good at teaching owners, and articulating in ways that a regular human, not to say I'm higher evolved or nothing, I'm just a little more, you know, unfiltered, autistic, whatever you want to call it, but how the dogs are seeing it in a way that they can get to relate to and understand why I make them do what they have to do and then just simple principles that any human brain can understand which is just conditioning learning theory you know instinct well you see how your dogs interact look at how you're interacting with them look at how your dog listens differently when they're around dogs or in a different environment or with a different person handling them so you know just ra even then though sometimes when you point out factual reality and just rational thought being promoted Sometimes you get people like they short circuit on that too. That's why I get stressed sometimes because I know this works. I try my best to be skillful, but some people make it so hard or they just keep doing the same thing over and over and they're nice, but I feel bad. But I'm like, hey, I got to draw a line here. You got to do the work. I'm not coming back. It's just, I, I, yeah, you have a hard dog. Life's hard. I know. I'm here for you. You want to call me? You want to chat? I'm good. I'll listen. But you can't make excuses because your dog doesn't buy it. I'm here to advocate for your dog and speak for their behalf of what they need and why they're doing the issues that really made you call a guy like me to help you with all that in the first place. Anyway, so we're getting up to eight minutes. So guess what we're going to do? We're going to make this podcast 121. Somehow, if anyone's listening, if you know how to help me get these things on iTunes, and tomorrow I have the day off, so I'm getting my car repaired. I think I'm going to try to uh, really um, get this... Uh, I had to just catch my thought of where I'm driving here real quick. I'm headed to the client. I have to make sure I'm, I'm, I'm good. Um, but I'm going to try to kind of get more looking at that. It's like iTunes and Spotify. But I put them on social media. I put them on YouTube. My YouTube channel, The Dog Savant, um, is doing pretty, you know, more people watching and getting a few more subscribers. But I'm doing a lot more long stuff like this on there. Uh, social media, people I don't think watch long stuff as much. So I'll try to make clips and... I just need help because I'm too busy and my attention doesn't really lie in these kind of things. But I've got a lot of content. Look, I could talk and talk about dogs, life, whatever, as you know, whatever subject give me. I can make up songs. Like, I, I have a good brain like that. I just don't have a brain that can dial in and just focus on this, get the algorithms working, you know, put it out the right way. I just kind of do things by flow of consciousness and. Uh, on the fly when I just feel the inclined and I, I get it people might be watching and want to hear so in the morning I'll try to give you some updates show you a little bit of my life but anyway we're almost in nine minutes so now we'll do a, we'll do a full podcast podcast 121 um I don't know we'll name it I'll figure it out when I listen back to it, what I'll name it but um anyway so if you do just to also just make sure you subscribe to these places like YouTube Instagram, TikTok, Facebook. Um, I have a lot of followers. We're at about 10,000 followers on Facebook, but they're not all like real. So that's disappointing. And I really just want dog people. I want people interested in dog contact, content, owners, trainers, people in the business, all that stuff. You know, that's what I want to speak to. And then people just kind of share some little like philosophies to me. Again, I'm not everyone's cup of tea, but I know where my heart lies and I'm very good with it. It's just some people, um, they misinterpret it and that saddens me and sometimes I tend to react back because I don't want to be treated that way when I know who I am uh, very well. I've done enough work on myself and I've been through enough life experiences and I have helped another, a lot of people. And that was my point, I guess, when I was explaining where my, you know, where all this information and what I do with dogs comes from. It's based on just a lot of experience and knowing what works and what doesn't by admittingly making a lot of mistakes myself and being incorrect and humbling myself to learn from those who knew better or asking questions or telling clients. I always ask clients, is there anything else I can do to satisfy you, to, you know, 
even enough for is there anything else we can address that's immediate needs that I that I haven't that to clarify questions contact me if you don't I'm here for you I had a client last night he's a really nice guy and he just was apologizing for asking all these questions he had a new puppy it was our first session I give a whole lot of info so I get it's overwhelming and it's overwhelming having a puppy he also has a family and has a lot going on in his house he seems quite successful um and he, I was like listen I go I do the same thing so don't feel but I was like don't I was like you don't have to worry with me I was like I am that person who you actually I just want to take my glass off um who uh I get it, and I'm not, I, please, I'm at your service. You're making me have a living doing something that I thoroughly love still, right? It's who I am, so no, it's just don't be a pain in the ass client. Like, if I tell you to do something, do it, because it's gonna help you, and don't make me have to keep explaining it. So also, again, because I feel bad, I'm spending your time and money every lesson. If we, So it's our first lesson, I think we're gonna do good work. He seemed very wired in a way that kind of needs it needs to be or you got to act in this way that some people again they don't like because it's a little intense and off-putting but um the dogs if you're consistent and calm and keep it all you know focused on the, the game plan um magic can happen really can uh so anyway yeah i'll sh probably share more of my day um also one last thing if you notice i am trying to share more full content um like just no edits long like this morning i did a full flirt pole session with sue kind of cool not cool but funny how the uh, the one time ever using these things thousands of times the uh the cord got snapped i think i was going a little hard with him because i was showing off of the camera but uh just showing client session you know if they give me permission i'll show more group classes things i really want someone who can just walk around and follow me and kind of get like you know i can get four or five hours of content a day and then cut it up and really you know put some helpful stuff out there but uh anyway that's what's kind of what i'm going to try to do at least occasionally um also because people if they have anything to say i can say well go look at what i do there it is there's no hiding from it start to finish the whole deal how i live with my dogs everything and that's again why i put up stuff with my dogs too to see how me as a dog trainer walks the talk um my dogs are well behaved happy they listen and I also show when they don't listen even in like zoom sessions when our clients i'm demonstrating oh look he got up okay this is what you do it's almost like invite it because your dog's not going to listen to you when you're practicing and they learn through mistakes as much as improvements all right we'll leave it at that 12 minutes and 30 seconds i'm losing my voice before my whole day even starts um thank you so much for everyone 10,000 followers but i know they're not all real but the ones who are real say hi the few of you that have been communicating with me and uh encouraging me thank you so much i really appreciate it have a great day